Good morning. Welcome everyone to the celebration of the second Sunday of Advent and the beginning of the new liturgical year, Cycle C. Are you one of the many adults who did not receive the Sacrament of Confirmation? If so, consider signing up for the four-session confirmation class beginning this Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. in Gillen Hall. Wednesday, December 8th, is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a holy day of obligation. There will be a 7 p.m. Vigil Mass on Tuesday evening, and on Wednesday, a school Mass at 10 a.m. and a Mass here at noon. There will be a Spanish Mass on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Rick. We pray in a special way today for Bickler and Yetman families and friends. Quite likely, you have a long checklist of things that you need to do before Christmas, which is now only three weeks away. But is repentance for the forgiveness of sins on that list? It ought to be. For this is exactly what John the Baptist called for in preparation for the Lord's coming. Gathered here today to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we repent of the wrongs we have done or failed to do, and seek forgiveness for our sins, so as to properly prepare a place for our Lord to be born into our lives. As we begin, please join in our gathering hymn in the red hymnal number 357, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 3 and 4 number 357. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
The Lord be with you. Dear friends in Christ, on this second Sunday of Advent, our attention is turned to the Gospel of Luke and the great figure of John the Baptist. John calls us out to the desert to prepare the way of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. As we light the second candle on our Advent wreath, let us prepare ourselves through prayer and penance. Let us open a way for the Lord to come into our lives by turning away from our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder us as we set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever. The peace of justice the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children, gathered from the east and the west, at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, born aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded, that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus, and this is my prayer, that your love may increase evermore and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> In the fifth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene, and during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, <clears throat> as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. I was thinking about the difference between expectation and uncertainty. Expectation is when you are certain that something's going to happen, like children waiting for Santa Claus and gifts a couple of weeks from now. But there's, a, a, I don't know, not, un, not anxiety, but a feeling of I can't wait, I can't wait. We have different moments in our life if we know, I'm sure for some, Thanksgiving this year might have been a time for expectation. At last, our family's going to be together. Our daughter is coming from Virginia with her kids and husband, things like that. Looking forward to something that hasn't happened yet, but with the assurance that it, it's about to happen and it will be a wonderful thing. Uncertainty is something different. When, again, when we don't know. So we know something's going to happen, but we don't know all about it, and there's things about it that we're worried about. I guess that nobody likes to be uncertain. Um, it can be something really silly, like this morning I just was confused as to what I was supposed to do with the Advent wreath and where to find the prayer I was supposed to say. Uh, made me nervous. Thank God our choir director uh, gave me her copy because I never did find the one that was supposed to be somewhere for me. Uh, 
you know, that's not the end of the world. And then something maybe a little more serious. A few weeks ago, I had my periodic appointment with the dermatologist. And as usual, he found a whole bunch of what he called precancers to zap, to freeze, I guess that's what it's called. And then he found one, he said, oh, I think we better take a biopsy of that one. And so I went uh, through a period of several days of uncertainty. Are, what, are they going to find anything? What are they going to find? How serious is it? Um, well, for all of us, I think a good example of uncertainty, not knowing what's going to happen and how it will impact us and others. What about the pandemic? Is the virus ever going to end? Is it, are we ever going to get back to quote unquote normal? And, and as people are saying, well, what will, will there be a new normal and what will that be? That kind of throws us for a loop. We were used to our lives following a certain routine and what we could count on. And then we've had so many ups and downs with this virus where it's, it seemed like it was under control and uh, then it, we find new developments such as this latest variant. I mean, that obviously is make anxiety is, I think, the way people usually feel when there's uncertainty about something. Um, and you know what? I think we can identify with the main characters that celebrate, not celebrated, that lived the first advent, even though they wouldn't have known to call it that. But they were looking to the coming of a child. There were very few. There were certainly Mary, the mother, Joseph, her husband, probably immediate family and relatives and maybe some close neighbors. It was obvious that Mary was pregnant after a while. My own suspicion is that as soon as Joseph got the message from the angel that there was nothing for him to worry about with his fiance, because what had been done to her was, was the work of God, that they got married because they both knew this was what God was calling them to, to be the family that his son being born into the world would be raised in. And so, as, time, as the months went on from, according to the dates we observe it, from the incarnation in March into the summer, and then this decree comes out from Caesar Augustus for all to go to register. He wanted to take a census of the whole world. How many, how many people do I rule? Talk about vanity. Um, and Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem. And Mary was, we don't know exactly when they set out, but it's not like going from here to, Polo, to uh, Alpine Road or something. Uh, and they didn't have a car, obviously. They had a donkey, according to tradition, not that the Bible says anything about a donkey, but it makes sense that Mary wouldn't be walking because that's how most people traveled in those days, except the military, the, the important people who had chariots with horses. Um, and if any of you have ever been to the Holy Land, uh, on pilgrimages that were organized that to go between Bethlehem and Jerusalem, which are practically next door to each other, to Galilee, to Nazareth and the Sea of Galilee and all those places. Um, modern day pilgrimages take a somewhat indirect route. If you're coming from Nazareth, you kind of go east and down along the Jordan Valley to Jericho and then to Jerusalem and Bethlehem. The reason for that is if you go on the direct route, you're going through Samaria, which has two disadvantages in the judgment of most people today. One, the roads aren't that great. It's very hilly and um, uneven territory, and it's the heart of the West Bank Palestinian territory. I had the blessing on uh, one time when I was in the Holy Land of going on the same route that most likely Mary and Joseph took through Samaria. Um, they didn't, you know, it wasn't like a one-day trip. They may even have started out by now uh, 
because they would have to take it slow with Mary and, her, and the delicate condition she was. If any, I mean, I think there's a lot of people here who have been pregnant and had children. And can you imagine riding on a donkey, say, from here to Atlanta? <laughs> Heaven help us, right? Well, that's what it was. Here to Atlanta is pretty flat. I suppose I should have said somewhere in Tennessee or something. Um, that's what it was like. And, you know, it was very romantic. We see pictures of holy cards of them and Joseph leading the donkey and Mary sitting there very peacefully. But, and the gospel story tells of the struggle they had to find a place to stay when they got to Bethlehem. But they'd had that struggle probably for weeks before that. Each time they had to stop for the night. Uh, there probably were nights that they basically stayed under the stars. The weather in the Holy Land is very similar to South Carolina, from my experience. At this time of year, we know, we had temperatures in the 20s a week or so ago, in the 80s yesterday. It's very variable. We have beautiful sun, we can also have rain. Once in a while, and especially here in this part of the state, we can have snow and ice. It's like that in the Holy Land. In the winter, it's almost anything can happen. So they may have gone through some very bad weather. It's very, especially when they were in the mountains where the climate would be rougher. Um, and there's no reason to think that they had, you know, they, they had, let's face it, they couldn't go online and make reservations or places along the way. It was, what can we find? What anxiety, what uncertainty did that couple face? And imagine their parents and relatives at home wondering, how are they doing? Will we ever see them again? This is a very dangerous trip. We wish they didn't have to do it. And of course, they didn't see them for two or three years, the way things happened with the exile in Egypt where they were undocumented refugees. Um, so if we feel things in our life right now or at any point that worry us, that interrupt our routine, and I find that the older we get, the more upsetting that can be. We like things to be the way we like them and are used to them. Um, we can have a spirit of adventure, but that's not the same thing as worrying what's going to happen next. Um, Mary and Joseph went through it in, to the nth degree and safely arrived in Bethlehem. And we know the rest of the story, which we will rejoice to hear in just a couple of weeks. But I would like to think that during this time, uh, when we do have things like worrying about our family in the, in the time of, of, of COVID, worrying about perhaps some of, our, some of us or some of our uh, loved ones who don't have jobs to go back to, who are facing all kinds of problems, uh, to remember, it's really nothing compared to what the Holy Family went through to, to safely bring into the world the Son of God. And they hear us. We can turn to them with confidence and hope. And the end is a glorious story. And it is for all of us, no matter what we go through along the way. I suppose I should add, so that 20 people won't ask me after Mass, <clears throat> well, what did the biopsy show? It showed melanoma, which can be really bad. I have a brother who died from it, but they said we have it in the very early stages. It's still, I forget what they call it, just on the superficial level, and I guess I'll have some kind of day surgery next month. In the meantime, I'm not trying to, I'm not, of course I'm a little bit worried. I wouldn't be human if I wasn't, but it's not, making me collapse out of concern and ask the Lord for help with that and come what may, come what may. What's most important won't change. God bless you. <clears throat>
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, <clears throat> seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. My brothers and sisters, I'm getting anxious. We may sow in tears, but we shall reap rejoicing. With that in mind, we turn to God in our adversity, anticipating the day when we rejoice. For the church, that we may gain the strength and resolve to fill in the empty valleys facing those who are poor and despairing, giving material assistance to those most in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may make low the mountains and hills we have built with weapons of war and destruction, smoothing the way to global peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in authority, that they may make straight the winding roads that thwart our progress toward fairness and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in danger of being without heat or shelter during this time of year, when the weather grows colder, that they may have a warm place to call home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may take to heart John the Baptist's call, repent of our sins, and prepare for the coming of the Lord into the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lost their lives, were wounded, and those who were traumatized at Oxford High School, that all affected by this tragedy will be given healing and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of all who are ill, and for those listed in our bulletin prayer list, and for those who have died, especially Bickler and Yetman families and friends, and all who have died by violence this week, that their families and loved ones may find comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now in silence, we offer prayers for those we hold in our hearts, those who have asked for our prayers, and those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, throughout the centuries you have offered comfort and hope to all who look to you. May we pass on that comfort and hope to others as you listen to these prayers that we make today through your Son, our Lord, whose coming we proclaim in joyous expectation, Jesus Christ.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, be pleased with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, we pray that you come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made known, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope, for the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by the word of God, we dare to say, our thought, oh, let's say it. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Share with one another some sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only 
May the word in my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord, you have replenished us by the food of spiritual nourishment. We pray that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firmly to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by our lives. Have a great day.